so much happened for me to the age of 27 that, that really laid the foundation for the rest of my life. Let's try to figure out that foundation so that you know where I came from. Um, I grew up in a small town in Maine called Burkittville. Population, 150. I guess one of the things that really was transformational in my life was I was a child sexual abuse survivor, which Some people, it makes them weaker, and some people, it gives them strength. For me, it gave me a need to control my life. And in some ways, that's, that's a good thing. And by the age of 17, I married my childhood sweetheart, and about a year and a half later, we had a beautiful daughter. We went our separate ways, and I found myself to be a single mom, supporting a a little girl and I had a job at a boatyard as a bookkeeper and you know with being able to pick up odd jobs along with that I could make ends meet then along comes another opportunity for me I got offered to be set up in a business a retail clothing business and I was like yeah, that works for me. <laughs> now, I knew nothing about that world at all. And I quickly learned how everybody wanted to be your Dutch uncle. But I dove in, got started, found a spot, got the inventory, worked it for nearly two years, probably a year and a half. And I had an opportunity to move downstairs in the location that I was at. So my dad, now by this time I've married again, moved me down, I got reset up. My husband is off trucking. I get a call, you need to get over here. Your salon, your, your shop has water damage. Water damage was an understatement. I had lost everything, or nearly it. And it's mid-February. It's like, what am I gonna do? It's mid-season, which means that you can't get inventory that late in the season. It's too early, your spring stuff has not arrived. And the only way to get back up and going would have been to go to Jobber. So I opted out of that and said, I will just clean up this mess, take care of all the insurance stuff, and focus on when my spring stuff comes in. Good plan, except for the bills kept mounting. And the customers now, it's, you know, things didn't come in as they were supposed to. The insurance didn't come through as it was supposed to. The bills are now really mounting up and time is passing by. I was able to reopen. I was like having to start all over again. Which I was able to survive for nearly a year before everything came crashing down around me. It was a re I was doing this during a recession and I gave it my all. I worked extra, extra jobs, I waitressed. I did whatever I had to do to give a home to my daughter but it still wasn't enough and bankruptcy took it and I within that I could have been down and out again in my life or I said no with this must the universe must want me to do something else so I looked at my options and I decided to 
go to cosmetology school, which was something I had wanted to do after high school anyway. So here I am now with a child, a husband, a broken business, and off to school I go. That served me well. I, when I finished that, I, it was not long before I opened my own business again. And I worked that business. I worked it from early in the morning until late at night. And it provided a decent living for us. And it allowed me, because I had this out of my home, that my, as my daughter grew, she, when she graduated, she joined me in the business after a few years. She had moved away and then came back. As we're on our second house, we've remodeled two houses in the, in the midst of all this. which you'll see pictures of, which was a challenge in itself to, to be running a business and, and taking a home that was, the town had it uh, con condemned. So we brought it back from a condemned state to something that we could live in. And this was happening while I was going to school, holding down another job, raising my daughter, and now I'm pregnant with a second child. So a lot is happening in this 10 year period of time to the age of 27, along with still being in the military. <laughs> because I, before I met my husband, I felt that I needed extra income. Being a weekend warrior was a way for me to boost my income at the time. So I made that commitment and fulfilled that. Fast forward, the kids are grown. I have missed most of their lives. Thank goodness I was home in the fact that they could come down. I was there when they got home from school. I was there, I could hear that part of it. But because of my schedule, I missed their games. I missed important events in their life that I should Looking back, you know, I'm very grateful to my husband who, who transported them to the games, who, who was their, their wheels when they needed it. But when I hear, but when I hear them talk about things that they did growing up, I wonder, here was I. I was grinding. I was standing behind the chair so that they could do those things. And then I had always attended events through the salon. And so at events, they have motivational speakers, they bring in people that are speakers for the industry. And I'm always looking to add something too for my customers. Always wanting to bring them what was the latest, what, what new thing could they look forward to if I had, had gone away to an event. Decided airbrush tattoos was the thing. And when I got hooked up with this company, it was my first introduction to masterminds. 22 of us. And our assignment each week for the first couple of weeks was he would give us a name and we were to call that person and introduce ourselves and get noticed. But so that get a card in the mail. And I'm wondering, how did this guy do this? How did he make this seem so real? Seem like he had done it, but it really wasn't, you know? And I flipped it back and forth and I tried the, the site on the card and it wouldn't let me in. So I called him and I said, how did you do this? he showed me that was my first real introduction to multi-level marketing which I joined him and I don't regret it because it was great I sent those cards out to my customers and they loved them 
but I wasn't very good at it. I I didn't I didn't really understand how to to make it work. Yes, I thought if I sent those cards out, I thought if I shared it with a few friends that they'd love it as much as I love it as much as I did. They loved the cards. They didn't love that, you know, that they were going to do it. <laughs> but but the seed had been planted. That was the point of the whole thing. The seed had been planted and things come into your life at the strangest times and you have no idea why. And so I ended up and I needed an operation. I needed two operations in the same year. Well now that's really putting my mind into another gear. If I'm not standing behind that chair, I'm not making any money. So if that means I'm out of commission for several weeks at a time, that's a stretch. That is a real stretch. But it was like everything was beginning to mount. The job my husband had, he had, had gotten through, and he was starting another business for how many businesses in our in our marriage. And you know, he just has a, he has an entrepreneurial mind also and he loves starting them, getting them to the point of where they're running, and then he's out of it. So there was a lot of changeover in our lives through these years. And so I wanted something, it's like I need to start looking at something that I don't have to stand behind that chair for hours on end. I wanted to do things. So while I'm recovering, I'm listening to teleseminars and Bob Proctor is one of the speakers. And it was a tapping solution seminar, if you're not familiar with what tapping is. I'm a very spiritual person, so I really like that sort of thing. And he was telling about the seminar that was coming up in California called Three Feet from Gold. Well, don't you know that I was like all over that. I wanted to be there so bad because I wanted to see this guy. Who was this guy? I just, I tried to devour anything at that time that he was, was speaking on. Get to California, heard him speak. Well, I, if there was a speaker up on stage, I wanted what they had. It, it, it was like, I think I came out of there with about four different things that I, different programs that I was going to go to. <laughs> the, hence the start of the information overload world and getting into things that I didn't really know about, spending a lot of money and then trying to put all the pieces together. Still working full time. I'm trying to figure out this new world that I want, to, want so badly to understand. I find the Internet Lifestyle Network and it's a godsend because now I'm, you know, it, it came at a point where there was no more money to to keep putting out for these shiny objects. And it put all the pieces together for me. It gave me a community. It gave me a family. It gave me that support that I needed in a world that I knew nothing about, that I wanted so badly to be a part of, but didn't totally understand. And I have never been in a community like that. I mean, you join online groups, and you know, if you, somebody's in there making a comment, every now and then, you're lucky. But, but they're asking, or they're posting their links, they're doing other stuff, and, but they're not really connecting with you per se. They're, they're in there for what they can get. But this community is so different. You introduce somebody into this community and they are welcomed with open arms by anywhere from five to 30 people at a whack. And just, just openly saying, welcome, welcome to this family. What can we do for you? And that's the life that I've always lived with my customers. That was what resonated with me was that I knew that if I introduced people into this company, that, that they would get what they needed to succeed. 
and that's where I have found my home. That's where I've made my sale, my first big sale. That's what gave me my belief. That's, that's when I knew that this life really was worth the wait. Peace and success. Make it a great day. Kathleen Cagher.